Suppose you want to append an image like so via the Notion API, not just by using an external image URL, which might break in the future, but actually uploading that image to Notion so that it's permanently stored in the Notion storage system. We can do this via the Notion API. In a previous video, I explained how to achieve this via Make. Today, I'm doing the same thing with NA10. In addition, I'm also using the latest API version because Notion released a new API version in early September 2025. So let's remove this image here. This is the NA10 workflow. It is a sample. In a normal use case, there is more dynamic data, very likely, for example, retrieving the image from Google Drive or Dropbox or Cloudinary or any file storage system, and then maybe using that URL to download the image, upload it to Notion. In this example, I'm hard coding an image URL for download for the sake of simplicity and demonstration purposes. But you can always map dynamic data very simply by adding nodes in here to retrieve images from your services. Uploading images to Notion is a three-step process. First, we need to create a file upload, which is this node does. This outputs an upload ID that we then use to upload the file to the Notion storage. And then finally, I will append the file to the Notion page that I showed you a few seconds ago. Separately, I also download the file, assuming that the file is stored in a publicly accessible URL and that you want to upload the image to Notion by actually uploading the file data, the binary data of the file, as opposed to using an external URL to upload it, which is also possible. So the first step is to create an upload. In here, I'm using the HTTP node in NA10 because NA10 doesn't support the file upload endpoint natively right now. And they're also still using the old API version. So the HTTP node allows me to use the latest Notion API version and to customize the request as much as I need. The first step is a post request to the slash file uploads endpoint. This is the Notion API right here. I'm using the predefined credential type being the Notion API that I connected by creating an internal integration token and then pasting it in NA10 to create the connection to my workspace. I also made sure in Notion that the connection has access to the pages and databases and data sources that it needs to access. I'm not explaining the details of this. You can research that for yourself if needed. Then I send headers. The first header is Notion version, and this is the API version that I'm using. That's the latest one you can see, released on September 3rd, 2025. This API version had a pretty important change when it comes to the Notion structure where data sources have been introduced. Data sources are tables that can be part of a database. I made a video explaining this new architecture in Notion. And then the second header is content type and the value is application slash JSON. That's the body that we use in the request. So the body is raw application slash JSON. And then the file upload request just needs two parameters. One is the file name. In this case, I hard coded it but that doesn't need to be the case. I can use a variable from a previous node if that's applicable. And that's usually the way to do this because you want the file name to be unique, ideally, for each file. And there is content type image slash JPEG because the assumption for this use case is that we want to just work with images. If the file type is more dynamic, then there might be a previous node that retrieves the file where you also have the file type. It could be a PDF, image, video, and then you determine the content type here by mapping the variable from a previous node. We can see what the output of this request looks like. There's the ID of the request. That's what we need. The upload URL right here that we will use in a subsequent API request. Next up, I download the file. This is a simple HTTP node that has the image URL right here. This is a publicly accessible image in Unsplash. Just for this example, the method is get and the output is a file because this is an image. So the output is binary, which I can then map in the subsequent node that uses the upload URL from the previous Notion API request right here, because that's the API endpoint that I need to post to in order to actually upload the file to the Notion storage system. Same credentials as explained before, same headers. And in this case, the body content type is form data. It is not application JSON. It is form data. And then the parameter type, I selected any 10 binary file because I want to upload the file. The name is file and the input data field name is data. That's because I get the file from the previous node. That's the binary output that I showed you. And that field is just called data in NA10. So I just need to type that and it will be dynamically mapped every time this workflow runs. Finally, I will append the file to the Notion page. For this, I will use the patch method on the URL to append the children to a page. Here, 
I can define the page ID dynamically. In this case, I hard coded it just for this example. Most often, this will be dynamically populated from previous nodes. Credential type is Notion. Headers, same as before, with the content type being application slash JSON. And then the body, in this case, it is children. So we construct what we want to append to that page. And then the object is a block. The type will be an image. In this case, I'm only working with images. If you're working with multiple file types, this will need to be dynamically populated, either by using an if statement or you might map it from previous nodes depending on your specific case. And then there is the image collection where the type is file upload because we are appending an image that was actually uploaded in Notion as opposed to an external image via a URL. And then the file upload is this ID right here. JSON.ID means that it is mapped from the previous node and the output is the list of blocks on that page as you can see here, including the newly appended image. Let's run it one more time. You can see this page is empty now and I will execute this workflow. And now the image is appended right here. So I can set the, I can crop it, set the caption, align it and do anything I want as per all the image blocks in Notion. This concludes the overview. Finally, you will likely schedule this. So instead of using a manual trigger, there will be a scheduled trigger, maybe every day, every hour, or it could be a webhook based trigger that only fires from specific actions from one of your tools. It could be a Notion property change via a database webhook. It could be a workspace webhook in Notion or any other tool changes that you want to track and then process via this workflow.